Praise and glory gives the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. All praise and glory gives the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. All praise and glory gives the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Our Lord Jesus Christ is coming so very, very soon. Please accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. He died on the cross for your sins. He shed his precious blood for you, and he loves you more than anything. And he's knocking at the door of your heart. Please let him in. Please let him in. And please don't take the mark of the beast. Um, the Magic Ocean Potion, the C.V. Vax. Anyway, I'm going to be to reading a, a sample from the Ethiopian Bible Illustrated Version. It's just a sample piece. And uh, take this up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thus, Isaiah the prophet prophesied and said, Remember ye not the things of the past, and think not about the things of olden time. Behold, I will make a new thing, which shall now spring up, so that ye may know that I make a road through the desert, and water floods in the wilderness, and the beasts of the field shall follow after me, and the young birds and the ostriches, for I have given water in the desert, and make streams of water to flow in the wilderness, so that I may give drink to my people and my chosen ones whom I have gotten, so that they may declare my glory and perform my commandments. And this is in the uh, chapter, what was the chapter titled? Child, titled, A Prophecy Concerning the Coming of Christ. Now, Lord Jesus Christ is returning. And if you haven't seen, there have been um, videos on you, the YouTuber, where there have been documents of video documentation of water springing up in the desert. Um, water springing up in Saad Arabia and uh, other parts of the uh, desert nations in the Middle E. I have to speak in code here. So, yes, water is springing up. And there are new rivers forming that they never had before there, which is all the signs of the times. It's signs of Lord Jesus Christ coming and his soon return. And also God's wrath being poured upon the earth and the judgments of the wi put on the wicked. For as Psalm 91 says, you will see the rewards of the wicked, but no harm will come upon you. God's wrath isn't upon his true children, no. It is upon those that are wicked, those that have chosen to worship the, the beast system, chose to take the mark of the beast, those who chose to worship Satan, and and those who chose to be fools and not to believe the truth and turn their backs on it. It is very, very, very sad that so many people have chosen this word, and the pain that Lord Jesus Christ feels from all these people rejecting him has it has to be beyond anything we could ever imagine I heard one brother had said he had had felt Lord Jesus Christ asked him to feel his pain are you willing to feel my pain even for just one second and he he hesitated and he did and he accepted it and he said it was the worst pain he ever felt in his whole entire life beyond any any words or anything he could put towards it the pain of a rejected Savior, of a rejected God. Unbearable pain. Unbearable pain. All those people who have rejected him. And his wrath is going to be poured on them. Because of it. God is very, a very jealous God. But he's also slow to wrath and slow to anger. It will come, and he's sending his signs and warnings. We had a uh, a whale beaching in uh, Cali, and the name for the state. They had a whale beaching. We've had all these uh, fishies washing up, um, not uh, of the living anymore, on the coast of um, J A P A N, Japan. Um, and regardless if it's caused by Fukushima or not, it's part of, part of God's judgments. God may use what's there to for his judgments. 
and he may allow these things to happen to be used with Neil Kirk to pass his judgments upon the wicked. You know, all these uh, fishies are uh, not living anymore. One third of the fishies are disappearing, the freshwater fish. Things are changing, and people are blaming it on all kinds of reasons. But the end result, it's God is God. He has control. He could take care of the fish and keep them all alive no matter what. Or he could take the fish home, so to speak. And these fish are going home, along with other animals as well. I mean, I've heard um, people talking about, um, a, a, about the disappearance of the red hawk. A red hawk, where I live, is very common, and now people are talking about its disappearance and how they're not seeing it anymore in the skies. Like, where did the red hawk go? And uh, why are all these like animals like? What's what's going on? You know what I mean? And like all the ash trees have just suddenly dropped dead. You can't find any ash trees anymore alive. Every single one of them's gone. And it started off with the first one I noticed. Um, it happened, uh, I think that one died when I was either in middle school or in high school, or my early years of high school. It was a very large ash tree. And then the next one died. It died, it was still alive when I graduated from high school, which was uh, 2013. And then it finally had passed away, probably the end of 2013 or the beginning, because it was dead, but it was officially completely dead. Um, because there was no leaves on it in 2014. And that was a very beautiful, very, very, very large and very, very tall ash tree. And uh, it's still standing for now, just bones, but it's been dead for a long time. Very beautiful. And then recently, between 2019 and 2020, there was a, a complete mass, all, mass die off. Every ash tree died, including one that had a complete rotified base. There was the base was completely ant eaten and gone, but the tree was still alive and was very healthy for a tree that had no base left. I mean, literally, the whole base was completely rotted and gone, but it was still standing. It wasn't much holding that tree up, I'll tell you that much. It, was, it had a huge uh, supply of ants that were uh, living there. I mean, big old fat carpenter ants. And to anyone who says carpenter ants don't exist, uh, carpenter ants do exist. There are big black ants. Um, I remember having someone tell me that carpenter ants don't exist. Uh, if you ever work, uh, go in the woods and uh, see a rotted tree, um, and you see these black bugs coming out with six legs, and they're, you know, they have, like, have a head with little ten eyes and little pinchers and a black abdomen at the end of the thing, that's a carpenter ant. I'm trying to give you a description. And if you chop one up that happens to be rotted, you may find a huge ant colony living in there. It'll be carpenter ants living in there because that's what they do. They burrow into wood. So anyway, yeah. Everything, it just, and like there's certain trees like I can't even find anywhere. Like the uh, deciduous pine tree. I call it, and I call it a lark. I don't exactly know what his name is offhand at the moment. But my nickname, childhood nickname for it is lark. It was a deciduous pine tree. There was only one in my town. And it died. It was rotted. And one winter, I it was the winter uh, right after I graduated, I think, that it got knocked over. Or maybe it was before that. Somewhere around there, 2013, uh, a time period. Um... Uh, it had a massive snowstorm that hit the town, and it, and it was with heavy winds, and it just it blew over, and the base of it exploded, because it was completely uh, filled with carpenter ants. They had been living in there for a very, very long time, decades of a uh, nest, a decades nest. The tree probably had very good soil. It was growing out of a graveyard. Um, it was a very, very old tree, but it was very pretty, and I had gathered seeds from it, but I didn't know how to grow it. Uh, and I don't know, and I lost and end up losing the seeds somehow down the road. But yeah, and there's no time left anyway to uh, grow uh, trees and or anything because it's it's not just the it's the end of everything, the end of the world as we know it. It's a song that I used to listen to when I was in high school. 
Um, it's the end of the world as you know it. And I can't remember the rest of the lyrics anymore. Um, I can't really remember any of the lyrics of my songs I used to listen to. Not that I was very good at memorizing lyrics to begin with. There was only one song I memorized. And it was a Halloween song that I sing all the time in public school. Which I will not sing. Because uh, it's a Halloween song. Obviously enough. And now I'm on a ramble. But keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. And the more we see events happening. Such as locusts swarming. Uh, all kinds of uh, earthquakes. And storms. And pestilences. Everything falling apart. We're closer and closer to the return of Lord Jesus Christ. And the closer and closer to our redemption um, draws nigh. Just keep looking up. Keep hanging on. Things are just going to get harder as time goes on. And just a word of advice. This is not the time to go buy a property and build a house. There is no time left. Jesus has given me this warning. And he told me there is no time left. There is no time left. There is no time to sit there and plan out your next, your five year, whatever pl financial plan. This is no time to plan out your kids' college uh, career plan. This is no time to plan out your retirement. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're sixty five now, it's understandable. But if you're Nowhere near 65. It's no time for you to plan out your retirement. Like for me, um, it wouldn't be till 2064, I think, for retirement. There's no time left. We're not, this, there's no time left. Jesus Christ is going to come way before then. I mean, way, 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 way. We don't have half time. So there's no time to sit there and like start planning out your financial future and retirement. There's no time to go out and buy a piece of property and build a house. There's no time to even move. Unless it's like an immediate emergency move. There's no time for all, all of this. There's no time to, if you have a decent car, stick with it. There's no time to buy another car or to make all these big moves. You need to focus on Jesus first and foremost and get your heart right with him. Who are you focusing on? And you need to help get rid of your self-will will, and your pride and give it all over to Jesus. And Jesus has said this before. Do you work your schedules around, do you work God around your schedules or do you work your schedules around God? God should be first and foremost, not the things of this world, not your friends, not your family, not your kids, not anyone. As Jesus said, do you, if, if, you love father or mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you love son and daughter more than me, then you're not worthy of me. Love Jesus more than your children, more than your parents, more than your husband, your wife, your aunt, your uncle, your neighbor, Mr. Enoch. You know, love him, love Jesus more than them. And if Jesus says you need to do this, and work saying you need to come in, who do you choose? Do you choose your job or Jesus? Even if uh, you're, you have eight kids and the baby's crying and your husband's about to come home and Jesus calls you, you have to, you have to do something. Drop everything and do it. No matter if the baby's screaming, kids are running around the house, the husband's flying down the driveway, everything's falling apart. Do what Jesus tells you to do. He's more important than your children and than your husband. And this isn't the time period to go looking for, to get married, to have children, because there's no time left. There is no time left. This is the end of the age. You need to focus on him, not on the things of this world. Not on anything of this world. We're coming to the end. And it's going to be very, very soon. I don't know when. The three days of darkness is going to start. Massive judgments are going to fall upon. The dollar is already in the toilet. It's about to be flushy, flushy, flushy. That moolah is about to be flushed down. The Mark of the Beast has been out for years now. It's been out for years now. Everything is is falling apart. Antichrist is here. That is rock bomber. Rock bomber. 
I can't say his name properly here. It gets the video gets flagged. Um, I have to speak in code always. Everything is falling apart. There's no time for any of these things. And um, if you're somebody underage and you have uh, parents trying to push you in your way, don't go out of your way and start arguing with them and fighting with them and getting your and getting your fists. God's not going to be with you in that. Nor should you should you like, you know, use um, like God as a levering chick against them either. Um, God's not going to be with you in that either. Let them go. Just let them go. Try to ignore them. Try not to give them the time of your day. And say, oh, maybe one day in the future. Or something like that. And let it go. Because there is no future. Other than Jesus' return. Let them go. If they're pushing you and like, you need to work full time. You need to make, you need to do this. Let them go. There's no time to build up your work career and, and get new jobs and all these things. Unless it's an emergency, understandable, move to another job. Because it's, let's say you got fired. But remember, it's temporary. Everything, Everything's coming to an end, so it doesn't matter. There's no need to sit there and, 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 and you're 18 years old and you're thinking, oh man, I, my parents are after me. They, I need retirement. I need to get a 401k. I need a full-time job. I need to get college. No, there's no time for any of that. There's no need to worry about that either. There's no need to worry about those things anymore. You don't need to sit there and build up all all the all these mullahs. They're going to be uh, going to be flushed down the toilet anyway. Um, for a retirement plan, if you're 18 years old, you're not going to be retiring until like 2070s. And that's never going to happen. There's no need to think about that. There's no need to think about any of that, or, or college, or full-time jobs, or any of it. There's no time left. And most of the schools, by the way, require you to take the mark of the beast. So, yeah. There's just no time left. And there's no time to move to foreign nations either. Uh, make big moves and big vacations and all that. Just put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith completely in Jesus. And trust in him with all your heart and soul. I'm sorry the video got a little bit longer. I wasn't planning to. But uh, it was put in my heart, you know, to warn you. And ask Jesus for his will, not your own. For you want his will to be done, not your own. And ask him to help get rid of your pride. And your selfishness. And your jealousy. And your fear. And your worry. And your doubt. And help him get rid of all of it. And when you have a problem. Like, uh, say your husband's like, oh. We, you need to get rid of your car, even though your car is good. And he's like, look, I, we can just take, buy this new car. It'll be alone, blah, blah, blah. And he's arguing with you about it. Step aside. Go to, your, go to your prayer closet. Have a long discussion with God about it. God will take care of it. There's no point in sitting there, standing there, screaming and, screaming and arguing with your husband that, no, we shouldn't get this car. No, we, we should hunker down. No, we don't need a, a, an auto loan on our heads. A 10-year auto loan on our heads for this new car. You know what I mean? Just step aside. Go to your closet. Have a long talk with God. God will handle it. He will, ha he will handle it and he'll take care of it. If you're having any type of problems with your husband and your kids, just go to God and he'll take care of it. Instead of trusting in your will, trust in God's will. And he'll handle it and take care of it for you. He will handle it and he will take care of that problem for you. Don't trust in yourself. Don't put your faith in yourself. Put your faith in God, not in yourself, and not in your in your knowledge and your understanding. And when it comes to the signs and symbols, God can give you the discernment to you know, to instantly know that you shouldn't buy that item because of the symbols are on the product. Like today, I was um, at the store and I saw. A glass jar of tuna fish, but on the front of it were garden gnomes on the image. I knew automatically without even needing to know the whole entire, you know, research and information that garden gnomes are, are not a good thing. So I didn't touch it. And another one had a, um, had a, um, one of those, um, witchcraft, um, circles on the front of the, uh, front of the jar of tuna fish. 
I stepped away and didn't want to have anything to do with it. I grabbed the other tuna fish that didn't have it on it. It happened to be a lot cheaper, by the way. The other ones were, like, uh, much more money, let's just say that much, offhand. But, yeah. Use discernment. Ask God to give you eyes so you can, so you can discern the things that you're buying. And ask God to show you what he wants you to buy, not what you want to buy. Because he'll know the be your best interests when you go in the grocery store, when you shop for your family, for your kids. He knows how much money that he had given you. It's his, his money. All the money you have is not yours. It's God's. It's all his. And you should ask him how you should use it. Because you're using God's money that he had given you. And ask him to show you what he wants you to buy in the store, not what you want to buy. Because there's a lot of things in the store. And sometimes I, like, these stores are huge. I'm like, okay, look at all these bottles of dish soap. I don't know which one to get. Ask God? That one. I don't know. Alright, I'll take that one. And I'll go on my way. Instead of sitting there trying to figure out which one was probably the, the, the right one to buy. I'm like, I'm partial to Dawn because I grew up with it. But like, he pointed out Ajax. It was a bigger bottle and uh, then I went on my way. So, yeah, shows you what you should get, what you shouldn't get, and you go in there and you're like, oh, look at that voluptuous piece of food in there, and I need one day, and your flesh is like, no, you need it, you need it. God says no. You turn away and go away from it, and step away from it, because you do not need it. And when you have God showing you what you should and shouldn't buy, what you should and shouldn't do, it makes so much things so much more peaceful and so much more happier. Because uh, if you go by the flush and let the flush go, you're going to be all over the place. You're going to start bringing in things into your, that you don't need. Impulse buys that you don't need, and then you next thing you know, like, I'm never going to eat this thing. <laughs> or I'm never going to use this item. Why did I get it in the first place? Like, yeah, I was cleaning the bathroom just just the other day, and I found this really old hairbrush, it was an electric hairbrush, um, and I was like, years and years ago, um, this is like a long, long time ago, I was a kid, and I saw it on QVC, and I told my mom, we should get that, it's really cool, it'd be really useful, and my mom decided to get it, and now it's still, it was ended up sitting in this drawer, bottom drawer in the bathroom, um, sink, kind of cabinet thing, and it had had rusted and, and uh, fallen apart, and it was never used. Nobody liked it. Nobody needed it. When you have God on your side showing you what you need and what you don't need, you don't end up with things like that. That just sit there cluttering up your home, rotting away, and, and being practically absolutely completely useless to you. And I've made that mistake many times, walking and living in the flesh. I bought a bunch of all kinds of an items that were anime-related and stuff that were absolutely completely useless to me, including an 8-foot-tall um, cardboard cutout of some anime character. What did I need that for? You know what I mean? I hope this helped under help somebody or did something for somebody. Um, I am just the, the, the dirt of the earth. I, there's nothing special. There's nobody above me. There's nobody below me. I am just God's dirt. He's of the earth. D dust. The only thing special about me, I'm God's dirt. And that's it. And every video, every view, every like, every comment, every everything that's given to me, it all goes to the glory of Lord Jesus Christ. I don't keep anything for myself whatsoever. No matter what it is, no matter if it's some reward that I had got in college or in high school, I don't keep them. I don't keep anything. I give them all to Jesus. They all go to Jesus. For I am Jesus' dirt. I am his holy temple, a temple made without hands. And he gets all the glory. He gets all the credit. He gets everything. I give it all to him. And somehow I ended up with 24 minutes of me just uh, uh, blabbering away. And just last of all, least to those I do talk to, I'm a, I'm a solitary warrior. I'm not the biggest socializer in the world. 
and I'm not the best at it. So I'm sorry I don't talk to you as much as I should. But again, Jesus comes first in my life, first and foremost. After that um, is everything else, including family, chores, job, and uh, friends as well. So, yeah. Well, I'll be back as the Lord leads, and Jesus is coming.